studies and sermons uh, and teachings rather are on that platform. But I came to Sarah today and I wanted to share this with you uh, through faith. I'm in Hebrews 11, 11 and through faith. Also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. Very good. Because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, sprang there even of one and him as good as dead. We're talking about Abraham. So many as the stars of the sky in multitude and the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. 11 and 12 of Hebrews chapter 11. We, I want to deal with Sarah because uh, it's very, most often when you hear uh, preachers approach this text and approach the miracle of the birth of Isaac, they deal with the faith of Abraham and they deal with Abraham's faith solely, okay? Um, if you would go through the annals of your own thinking and all the sermons you've heard and all the studies you've heard on faith, usually, most, most in general, faith, he, Abraham's faith is going to come to the forefront as something that the preacher or the teacher will discuss. But it's very rare, um, if ever, that someone approaches this miracle from the standpoint of Sarah. And this is one of the tragedies of how uh, biblical scholarship and how preaching is done is most in generally the preaching is so dominated by males that we preach from our gender and not from the spirit. Y'all not going to talk to me at all. We preach from our gender and not from the spirit. And so we miss things because the story is so male dominated uh, not that the, Abraham is not a part of the miracle. He's a wonderful part of the miracle. But you don't get an Isaac without a Sarah. I need a good amen right there. You don't get an Isaac without a Sarah. You don't get an Isaac without an Abraham. You need two to... <laughs> it takes two to tango. And because so often our, our preaching is dominated by gender instead of the spirit, we miss... We miss the other side of the miracle, Bishop Darko. We miss the other side of it. We miss an opportunity to, to unlock a revelation that will release somebody else into a miracle. And I want to unlock that this morning, early in the morning. I want to unlock it in your spirit because there is Sarah's strength. Somebody say Sarah's strength. Just speak it in the atmosphere. Sarah's strength. Sarah had strength. She received strength through faith. Also, Sarah received strength to conceive. So you have to receive strength to conceive. You have to receive strength to conceive. It's not just the miracle wasn't just about Abraham. Abraham, his body was just about dead, okay? His body was just about dead. That's the Bible says his body was dead. And if God says you're dead, you're dead. His body was just about dead, okay? And 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 he had faith and he received a son. But on the other side of the miracle, see, people will, on the other side of the miracle, people will just look at one half of the miracle and miss the other half. They'll see what the preacher did, but not talk about what the people did. <laughs> Hallelujah. They'll see what the miracle worker did, but not look at what the faith of the person, the faith of the individual that had, the, had received through their faith the strength to conceive a miracle. If I don't conceive it, I, I, if I don't conceive it, I'll never receive it. If I don't conceive it, I'll never receive it. There is, there is faith that is necessary on the part of the recipient of the miracle or the recipient. You'll never get it done. You'll never see it happen. The preacher can preach over you and the prophet can prophesy over you until he is blue, she is blue in the face, but you have to have the faith to receive your own miracle. You have to have the faith to conceive your own miracle. You have to believe your own miracle if you believe it. See, see this 
was the thing is people said, Chris, why do you always, when I preach, I don't really say it when I teach, but when I preach, I, I'll say, if you believe it, say yeah. And people think that's just some, some kind of preacher trick or something that just to get the crowd riled up. And it does do that. Hallelujah to God. Okay. <laughs> but I want you to understand this is it's a serious question. Because if you don't believe it, then you won't receive it. Okay? The other side of the miracle is, yes, Abraham's body is dead, but Sarah is way past age. She wasn't able to conceive when she was of age. Hallelujah. She wasn't able to conceive when she was of age, and now she's way past age, and she has... Uh, she is in this season of her life. She has now amassed enough faith. She has, she has amassed enough belief. She has amassed enough experience with God. She has been rebuked of the Lord herself for laughing within and of herself. The fact that the Lord knew she laughed in the tent was enough for her to believe. And she, she began to believe to receive strength. Some might say receive strength. See, I have to have faith to have the strength to birth out what God has spoken. I have to have the faith to get the strength. I, 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 the miracle is the miracle. The miracle comes from God. The miracle is the word from God. But it's there is a part of faith that I need on the inside of me where I have to have the strength to both receive the strength. I need the faith to receive the strength, and then I need the faith to conceive the seed to birth the miracle. See, this is this is where we miss it, is we want the preacher to have it. We want the prophet to have it. We want the doctor to have it. We, we want the leader to have it, but we don't want to have it ourselves, and because they're so used to everybody clapping for how great their faith is, almighty miracle worker, that they miss the other side of the miracle. Everybody's clapping for everything. Abraham, who's clapping for Sarah? Y'all not going to talk to me at all this morning. It's early in the morning. I woke up, knocked the cold dust from my face and got up and got in the word of God. Holy Spirit jumped on the inside of me because someone's going to get the strength to receive and conceive your seed for your miracle. You need the strength to receive it. You need the strength to conceive it. You need the strength. And that's on your part. See, you have to have walked with God a minute. Glory, hallelujah. You have to have walked with God for a while. Somebody needs to share this because someone needs to hear this across the world. You need to have the strength to receive it. You need the strength to believe that God is able to do it. That you don't, don't walk around here just waiting for somebody to give you a word. There's so many people, they got so many words from this prophet, and I got a word from that prophet, and I got a word from that pastor, and I got a word from that church, and you still ain't seen your miracle. It's not that the word was inaccurate, is that you didn't have the faith to receive what they even said. So every often, you can get a word from somebody and it blows your mind and I love that. That's one of Lord blow my mind. But after that, I want to have the strength to conceive what God says about me. I want the strength to receive what God says because I need to birth out. I don't need another prophecy. I don't need to spin around three times. I don't need to run another floor. I don't need to dance another dance. I need to see the manifestation of the miracle. And so we miss the other side of it. We're going to talk about Abraham, and he's worthy to be talked about. He's the progenitor of three of the major religions of the earth. He's the progenitor of Judaism, the progenitor of Christianity. He's the progenitor of Islam. He's even the Baha'i faith. Glory, hallelujah. The Latter-day Saints, there's so many different groups of people that will acknowledge the faith of Abraham. But who talks about Sarah? By faith, Sarah. By faith, Sarah. Through faith. Faith Sarah also herself received. See, so that when the preaching is so dominated by a male perspective, we'll forget that it takes two to tangle. We'll forget that it takes two to have a mirror. It takes two to make a thing go right. <laughs> God, it takes, it took the both of them to believe. He, he had to believe God for the seed uh, to, to put within her, but then she had to she had to have faith that this time, I said this time, somebody say this time, it was gonna work after a lifetime 
lifetime of waiting, after a lifetime of possible miscarriages, after a lifetime of losing what she had, after a lifetime of stillborns. We don't, we don't know the full story. All we know is that she was barren to the place where she could not receive or conceive seed. It wasn't that Abraham wasn't given what he had, glory to God. And we see that what he had was so potent that after she dies, glory to God, he didn't have no problem having, getting Hagar back. When she was still alive, he didn't have no problem getting Hagar pregnant. He got Hagar pregnant, boom, done. She said, take the maid. He took the maid and bam, here you go, Ishmael. Okay, and then after Sarah died, he's going to marry one more time. He's going to marry another woman and this woman is going to is going to produce, I believe, six more children, six more sons for Abraham. When God touched him, God touched him. Glory, hallelujah. When God pays you back for the years that you lost, he'll make you more productive than you've ever been in your life. God will quicken your body. He'll quicken your mind. He'll quicken your business. He'll quicken your ministry. He'll quicken it to the point where it produces at a rapid rate, at an advanced rate. But let's not just get so excited about about Abraham that we forget about Sarah because she had to be on the other side of the miracle through faith, through faith, through faith she was able, through faith, through her own faith she was able to birth out something incredible and to receive the promise of God because she trusted the one who promised. See, she wasn't trusting Abraham. Y'all not going to talk to me at all is if you read the Bible, you're going to see that continuously, it is not in her best interest to trust. Abraham is not the, you need to stop putting your trust in man. You need to stop putting your trust in man. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. It's imperative that we not be so man-centered. We can't be so man-centered when we need a miracle from God. Yes, I love my friends, and, and yes, I love the men and women of God that God has placed in my life, but ultimately, my miracle is not in their hands. Oh, God, y'all better come get me early in the morning. I'm trying not to holler. Is <laughs> Ultimately, my trust cannot be in people because people are fallible. People fail. People have ups and downs and ins and outs and go through things and go through this, but people are just people, but God is God, and at the end of the day, I need to look back and say that it was good for me to have trust in God. Let's read this thing. Hebrews 11 and 11, it says, through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. Who says it was too late for your miracle? Who says it's too late for your miracle to happen? Who says it's too late for your dream to come to pass? Who says it's too late for your door to open? Who says it's too late for your ministry to come to fruition? Who says it's too late for your book to be published? Who says it's too late for you to launch into that second, third, fourth business, man. We're, we're starting two more businesses this month. I'm so excited. I'll say, Chris, where you been? I've been working, y'all. <laughs> I've been working. I'm a priest king. I'm not just a priest anymore. I'm a priest king. I'm working in the kingdom of God. I need you to understand that it's never too late to see your dream happen. It's never too late for you to birth out your miracle. They said she was past age. They said it was impossible. But with, with her faith, was so strong, it says, therefore sprang, verse 12 says, therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, as many as the stars of the sky and the multitude and as the sandwiches of the seashore innumerable. See, maybe Abraham already had the faith. Y'all not ready for me. Maybe Abraham already had the faith to conceive. He has enough evidence that he's able to conceive. He had enough evidence with Ishmael to conceive when he went into Hagar. I'm just in the Bible. He had enough faith for that. So maybe the impasse was with the person who had the problem. Abraham was not barren in his body. He was just old and dead and old. 
Glory to God, okay? But he had he wasn't his his body had already produced seed. He was very pleased with Ishmael. He was happy to have Ishmael, but when God has a greater promise for you, sometimes you have to wait for the faith of others to be aligned. We hate this part. We hate this part, but it says where two or three are gathered in his name, that's where he's in the midst of us. It, how can two walk together unless they agree. Sometimes God will put you in a situation that what he wants to birth out of you is so big that you need somebody else to walk in faith with you. That's why you have to be very selective of who you allow into your circle. God is limiting your circle in this season. God is cutting down your circle in this season. Whenever God begins to change your orbit, he begins to change your circle. I'll say it again. Whenever God begins to change your orbit, he begins to change your circle because when he's changing in your orbit, he's beginning to drop off the moons and drop off the other, the other things that were pulling on your gravitational pull because he's shifting you to another place. He's taking you to another place of understanding. He's taking you to another place of power and he's taking you to another place of, play, of praise and faith so that you can be surrounded by people that will resonate at the same level of faith that you're operating in because that's the atmosphere in which which you conceive. That's the atmosphere in which your miracle comes to pass. That's the atmosphere. It doesn't take a lot of people to get something that will produce more star, more than the stars of the sky. It doesn't take a lot of people to produce something that will, will produce more than the sand of the sea. So it was just the two of them, but both of them had to have faith, and thank God the Bible declares that through faith, Sarah can see. Now, I want you to see this thing. I want you to see this thing so that you can have the faith. It's past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Who had promised? God had promised. God came to their tabernacle. God came to their tent by the tree of Mamre and knocked on the tent post and, and told her on his way to Sodom and Gomorrah. He was going to judge Sodom and Gomorrah. He was on his way. He stopped by to tell her about this time next year, you're going to be holding a child. And she believed. First, she didn't believe. Hear me. She'd gone through so much disappointment. She'd gone through so much pain. She'd gone through so much blood. Bloody waiting. She'd gone through so much hurt, so much pe people talking about her and people criticizing her. She'd gone through trying to fix it herself with Hagar and that failing. She'd gone through that tragedy and, and she'd gone through the devastation that had gone through her family and finally she received a word from the Lord. Uh, sometimes I just need a word from God. Y'all not going to talk to me at all. Sometimes I just, I can't even even receive it from somebody else. I need God to thunder it in my spirit. I need God to open up the heavens. I need God to speak through a dream. I need God to speak directly into my spirit. I'm not asking for an audible voice, but hallelujah to God. <laughs> Sometimes I need God to speak to me in that still small voice that resonates within the caverns of my own soul. I need him to speak and reveal and say, she received a word from the Lord and she trusted in God's word. Stop trusting in people. Stop trusting trusting in horses. Stop trusting in chariots. Stop trusting in the strength and the machinations of men and begin to trust in the power of your God. He is able. He is willing. He is powerful. Yes, I want you to understand that this is your season to have strength to receive. Strength to receive. Strength to receive. I need to receive strength so that I can conceive. It's not just enough for me to have faith. I have to have faith to have strength to birth out of me what God is. Can you imagine you're a woman, you're approaching. Let me have some coffee, y'all, because I'm. Don't. You see, I don't really need to. I wake up awake. <laughs> you're the God. But. I just love it. I love it. You got, I love the whole thing about it. I need you to see this. I want you to see this deeply in the spirit is that God is saying that it's not just good enough to have faith. I need faith to receive strength. Yes. Thank you, Michelle. Receive it. I receive it in Jesus. I receive strength to, to receive. I receive the faith. I have the faith to receive strength 
to conceive that what God has promised me is coming forth, that what God has said to me is coming forth. I have the faith. See, you'll never do anything in ministry. You'll never do anything in ministry. You'll never do anything in business. You'll never do anything in finance. You'll never do anything in real estate. All of these things are operated through the realm of faith, through the realm of faith, even people who are not godly but have faith. Even through, they're, 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 they're not even godly, but they have faith. I was driving down the road. I was driving down the road. You know, I live in Denver, Colorado. It's about to snow, y'all. Y'all not talking to me at all. It's about to snow. We're supposed to get, it's September here. If you're watching on YouTube, it's September, early September. We just had Labor Day weekend, and, and they're talking about snow. And, you know, and, and one of my friends, glory to God, decided to bless me with a classic bins that I had been dreaming about for my birthday when I when I turned my last birthday I walked outside and there's this classic 1983 okay 1983 Benz I had wanted since I was in the ninth grade <laughs> drop down 380 380 SL was sitting out in my driveway and glory hallelujah I was I was already starting to get it you know I'm, I'm that I'm that dude I don't wait for people to bless me I'll bless myself I'll bless myself, glory to God. If I got my sons covered, and Lord, and I do, and I got everything paid, I'll, I'll start to set some money back. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I put some money back, and, and I have my, my bucket list. Don't wait for nobody else to give you a bucket. You got to, sometimes you got to fill your own bucket list. I bought one before. I had one before. I moved to the Rockies, and, and I bought that myself, but this time I didn't have to do it myself. You don't hear what I'm saying to you. See, God will put some people in your life that are sensitive to your, not only your wants, but your dreams. There'll be some people, he'll put some people in your life. You can't even say some stuff around them. If I even say it around certain people, they'll run out and get it because they understand when they bless my life, God's going to bless their life. They understand that there is a reciprocal connection that when we bless each other, when we, what my gift is to speak the word of God and as they sow seed into to that word and so seed into my life, they expect a blessing too. And God, God, they get one. <laughs> God. Well, anyway, I walked outside, I saw this little Benson, and my friend, my friend Robert Pitts, who watches me from Detroit. Uh, I think he's in Detroit, Michigan, and he said, Chris, how did you get so brown? See, because wife, you're white and you're watching. Yes, we, we don't tan. Uh, people, my complexion, we don't tan. We just get, we get, you know, we just get good and chocolatey. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he said, Chris, you awfully brown. I said, man, I've been driving with the top down since June, baby. I let that, I let that sun hit my skin. Glory, hallelujah. You got to put on little, you know, you got to put on some stuff now because they done destroyed the ozone layer and even black folk is burning. <laughs> hallelujah to God. I used to be on my bike all day long back in the, back in the day. I wouldn't peel. I would, <laughs> I didn't burn, you know. I don't burn now. I don't, at least I don't, but I can tell, I can tell I've been out in the sun and I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay, you know, glory. I'm not trying to, good black. Don't crack when you stay out this old non ozone layer sun. And but I've been out there the whole time. I put on my stuff. Put on my. I forget my hat. I, I'll start driving with my hat. But you know if that Ben's got that big old engine, baby. And I put that foot down on that gas and. Bam, it's gone. That hat flies into the little back compartment. It only has two seats. And I was back there flying. I mean, just flying, enjoying the Lord and enjoying the blessing and enjoying what God was doing in my life. And, and I've been doing that since June. Y'all say, Chris, where you been? I've been in the car. <laughs> I asked folks, you need anything from the store? Need anything from the store? Just give me an excuse to get out there going for coffee. When I got coffee at home, I'm telling you, I'm just driving and driving and going and going. Well, ladies and gentlemen, friends and saints, <laughs> There is a there is a, a blizzard like thing coming, to, and here I am with I I done put the truck up and 
I put one the, the truck up and I'm driving the bands. I said, Lord Jesus, I gotta get out here. I gotta get out here. I gotta get out here and, and I need to take this bins back to so I have a little place where I park the bins where it's gonna be covered, it's gonna be protected from the winter. <laughs> Glory, because God never gives you a blessing that you can't protect. Wow! Did you hear what I just said to you? I hope you hear. God won't give you a blessing if you can't protect it. God will God will hold up blessings if you don't have a place to pull. He says, I'm going to pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive it, which means that if he's going to pour you out a blessing, he's got to give you more rooms. So I took it to the other room. <laughs> I took it to the other space. I took it to the other place. And, and I had, I'm driving it and I'm driving it and I got to get it in. I don't want to get the, the stove not coming for two days, but I love this car. You understand what I'm saying? And I flipped that one in, packed that into the place, zipped it up, closed it, closed it, closed it all up and pulled out the truck, got back in the truck and took the truck back because the truck is four wheel drive. Ain't no snow going to stop what, can't, can't stop what, you know, you understand what I'm saying to you, and what I want you to understand is that is that God will give you the desires of your heart if you can conceive them. He'll give you your dreams. I'm prophesying to somebody. I'm talking. He will give you your dreams. You're just gonna have to have the faith to receive strength to birth them. You there, there's a lot of people that try and do a lot of things, but they don't have strength to birth it. There's a lot of people that try and do a lot of things, but they don't have strength to birth it because that is wrought through faith. That is wrought through believing God. That is wrought through believing that God is able to do it. I have a promise from the Lord and no devil in hell is going to be able to stop or deter me from from the place that God is taking me. Yeah, they may covet your ministry, but if you don't have the faith to do that, you can't do it. They may covet your business, but if they don't have the faith to do that, it wasn't money, it's not contacts, it's not relationship. Sometimes it's just having the strength to receive the faith, to, to have the strength to receive it and believe it and birth out what God, this is the faith of Sarah, last landing, let me land it here, because <laughs> we got some, I got, you know, I have four business meetings to do before noon today, here's the thing I want you to see, is by faith Sarah received, received let's read it, through faith, also, Sarah received herself. I love that. Sarah herself, making sure that we're not going to blame it on Abraham. We're not going to give Abraham the exclusive credit for her miracle because it's her miracle, too. It's her miracle, too. Fair Sarah herself. Now, I want you to look in verse number 11, Hebrews 11, 11. And this is the thing to run around the room on. And y'all, if I get if I lose it, if I just pass smoothed out in the spirit, don't just I'm an old Pentecostal. I'm just an old Pentecostal. And so every now and then I know in this charismatic movement, you know, I know in this new fangled postmodern expression uh, that we're not supposed to be charismatic, but I'm an old charismatic. So every now and then, every now and then that old Pentecostal side will just come up and I'll buck a little bit. And these are the, these are the bucking moments. <laughs> I said bucking moments. These are the times you get to, you get to have a phrase break. Is he's going to say, and I know this is the Greek and Hebrew, we're, we're balancing Greek and Hebrew, but I'm going to take liberty with the Greek because I know the Hebrew. <laughs> Hallelujah to God, is it says through faith also Sarah. Mm. <laughs> Sarah, S A R A, if you're from Texas, S A R A, <laughs> A, through faith Sarah, Sarah, no H. Through faith Sarah, no H. See, the H in the Hebrew was an indicator that, that she was a, a prince. The H in the Hebrew is, is an indicator of the fact that she had favor, the ha, it's, it's another thing. He, the, 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 the H is an indicator. And so her name was changed from Sarah to Sarah, from Sarai to Sarah. Okay. But this one, there's no H here. There's no, there's no added anything on here. See, 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 you have to become Sarah. 
You have to become Sarah to receive Sarah's blessing. You can't live in Sarai. This is the turning point. You got to change your name before you have the evidence. You got to you got to change your name. You have to change what you say about you and change how you speak about yourself. You have to have the ability to say, my name is now Sarah. What? What? How are you just going to change your name? How are you just going to change your name? Well, he changed my name. Well, we didn't hear him change your name. I don't care what you heard. I don't care what they said. I don't care what you think. I have to trust the one who has promised me. And he, what I love here is the one through faith, also Sarah. Through faith, not Sarah. I, Sarah, I don't get nothing. Hear me when I'm talking to you. You want to know why things are held up in your life? You want to know what are you saying about yourself? You, what are you saying? What are you declaring over your own life? You have to consider the promises of God. I want to recommend to all of you that you have a journal, that you get a journal. You, you, get, you get something that you, you can write down what God says to you. You can write down what God says to you. You can write down, write it, and maybe you don't have paper and pen, or you're not a paper and pen person. You're one of these modern people that doesn't, that write it in your phone, write, write it somewhere, write it down so that you can remind the devil what God said. I can remind the devil and I can remind God that God, you said it, that I believe it and that settles it, that my faith is aligned with yours because through faith, I'm receiving strength to conceive seed. And that seed, though it may be small at the beginning, I can nurture it. I got the strength to nurture it. I got the strength to grow it. I have plus, my, the placenta is strong. My, my womb is strong in the spirit and I'm going to birth out in due season. About this time next year, you're going to be holding your miracle. She had strength to believe it because she didn't have trust in man, but she had trust in the God who had made the promise. Somebody today, you're going to have trust in the God that made the problem. If God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. I don't care about a pandemic. I don't care about a quarantine. I don't care about an economic structure. I don't care about a political system. I don't care what atmosphere I'm in or what climate I'm in. I don't care what's going. If God said it, he's going to bring it to pass. I'm standing not on the word of a man. I'm standing on the word of God. And as you stand on the word of God, you can take that to the bank. You can take that to the lending center. You can take that to the to the human resources department. Now, I'm not saying you walk in the human resources department and say, well, God said you're going to give me the job. No, I need you to have strength to conceive. I I need you to have strength to, to, to conceive the promise of God. And that all happens internally until it's too big to hide. Mm. Sometimes we're, we're too public too fast. We're too public too fast. We're public too fast. See, see, I'm from the old school is we wouldn't even tell somebody you were pregnant till you were some meant you were some months in. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. You'd wait till you were some months in because you didn't want to put it out there too soon. Sometimes we put stuff out there too soon. See, social media gives us the ability to something happen, we jump on that phone and we and then it doesn't go the way because I need to do this internally. I need to do this in my prayer closet. I need to do this in my secret place. Nobody, uh, what they did to re to have the baby was nothing that anyone would do publicly. Oh, shit. Glory to God. Particularly in the age of Abraham. What they did to have the baby, the intimacy that they had to have, the touch that they had to have, the miracle that had to happen in a private place, in the tabernacle of their own life. It had to happen within the tent, the ohel of their own life. It had to happen in the tent first before it could go public. And once it goes public, it's going to be so public that the world is going to know for the next, good God, the next four generations, okay, 
for four for for four, the next four thousand years. For the next four thousand years, people are going to be talking about Abraham and Isaac. It's two thousand years since Christ. Okay, one thousand years from David to Christ. Uh, one thousand years from Mo, Mo, you've got Moses, and then you got Abraham. So we're talking almost. We're talking almost six. We're uh, we're talking five thousand years or so of this story of this faith statement. What happened in a private space became public, and so the whole world. Once God blesses you, everybody's gone know it. When God does it and he want on that level, you don't have to tell nobody prematurely. You don't need nobody else to clap for you. You don't need to, I'm believing God. No, I need one person. If I can find one person who has faith to believe, if I can find one person who has the faith to agree with me, I'll agree with you if you agree with me. I'll agree with you for your miracle if you agree with me for my miracle. And as we put our agreement together, as we touch and agree, God is going to do great, great things in your life today. Man, I got to get to my meet and I got to get up out of here, but I want to pray with you very quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, I add my faith to theirs. I add my faith and belief that God is going to open doors. God is going to make ways. God is going to move mountains. God is going to approve legislation. God is going to change judges' minds. God is going to change judgments. God is going to remove obstacles. God is going to break the barrier of debt limitation. God's going to break the barrier of debt limitation. God's going to break the barrier of debt limitation and you're coming into your wealthy place. You're coming into your new season. Your economy is changing. Your life is changing. I agree that the best days of your life are not behind you. The best days of your life are in front of you and the best is yet to come in the name of the Lord. I bless you in Jesus name and I'm believing God that you're going to have the faith through faith you're going to have the strength to, you're going to receive the strength to conceive the seed that is going to unlock your miracle. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. And we all said together, amen. God bless you. This is Dr. Chris Hill. If this was a blessing to you, I need you to do two things. I need you to do two things. Is I, I need you to do two things. This is a blessing to you. I want you to sow a seed into the ministry so that we can continue to share to you. We have so many other things plan that are kind of waiting. I'm waiting for for the, the, the situation in our country to change in, in some way so that we can do some other kinds of meetings. And I'm starting to do meetings all over the country. And I'm starting to do me. I'm, I'm always doing meetings via Zoom. If that's something that you're interested in us doing, just contact us. I think I'm put, the number is up there. You can contact us. I think I'm doing something in the Ozarks. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to actually through Zoom, I'll be getting an opportunity to encourage pastors in one of the most, uh, the toughest places to pastor within the United States of America. And then I'm preaching in South Africa. I'm, one of my friends is is got me preaching in his church via, via Zoom. I was preaching in Kenya last week. I preached in Chicago the week before that, just via the internet. It's quite amazing what God is able to do. And so we built this studio. You see our sets are constantly changing so that, that I can have, because I need different places that inspire me. I, if I'm not inspired, I don't, you know, I need, I, I'm, I'm a, it's my gift is inspired by beauty and setting and um and so that's coming. So if you want to sow into that, I want you to sow into that. That's the first thing I need you to do. I want you to sow into it. I want you to give into it at whatever level God touches your heart to get. If this word is blessing your life, I want you to be a blessing back because what we do is a little bit different. Faith walking. I'm going to pick up in this teaching. I might even pick up this teaching this, this week. This is so, such a fun time to get to share with you. And uh, of course, and then Fridays, we all on Fridays, we do coffee with Chris, coffee with Chris, coffee with Chris on a Friday. We're going to get together almost every single Friday, no matter where I am. I'm setting up my life so that I can be on Fridays, 530 Mountain Time, 730 on the East Coast time so that we can set up everything so we can have coffee with Chris and get together and share with you the word of the Lord. And then throughout the week, we want to be able to share with you in Bible study. I want you to sow a seed, just drop out and sow a seed into that. And then secondly, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, I need you to do two things that it helps us with the YouTube stuff because I'm building stuff on that side. We have a brand new website that I'm about to announce 
brand new website. Website's already up. I'm about to announce it. And that has all of the panoply of all the different things that we do, both in industry and ministry. I got people, y'all calling me up for stock tips now. Good God Almighty. I don't do that. <laughs> I don't do that. Chris, are you in the stock market? Of course I'm in the stock market. I'm a businessman. <laughs> but, but do I give stock tips out? No. We, now we, if we have a cup of coffee, you know, if you, you got to be a Denver person for that or if I'm in your city, but I don't do that over online. I don't do that publicly because that puts me in jeopardy and I like me a lot. Now, Chris, can God bless me in the stock market? Of course, you should have investments. You should have some other things going on. If your prophetic gift, will, if you can prophesy what somebody had for breakfast, maybe you can prophesy where the market's going. Just maybe. It's just a thought. I'm not just trying to cause no trouble. I'm not trying to get in your way. But I want you to understand that God wants you to be blessed. Secondly, if you're watching on YouTube, I want you to do me a favor. Subscribe. Well, first like it and then subscribe so you can receive our words as we upload them usually every two days. God bless you. This is Dr. Chris Hill. Child, I got to get to work. I'll see you later. <laughs>